10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 154. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 154 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. My name is Nick Manella. I am the creator and host of the show. We are so happy to have you here. Really enjoy doing this for you every single week and thanks for returning each and every week to learn something new to help you on your jazz journey. So before we jump into the show, a couple of housekeeping items. Just a reminder that you can get the PDF to this episode and all the other episodes that we've ever done by going to our Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash 10 minute jazz lesson. Or you can go to our website, 10 minute jazz lesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners and go over there. And the way that it works is that you pledge a very, very small amount of money every single month, $3 or more, and you get your hands on all of the worksheets that I make for every single one of these episodes to help you along with getting better at your instrument and better at jazz. We have a really great community over there of over 200 people that have pledged their support and uh, shown that this podcast is actually important to them. So anybody out there who feels the same way, we'd really appreciate those donations every single month. It keeps everything coming at you. Got to give a quick shout out to all the people that have joined up this week. Uh, The first person is Jeppe, and I do not know if I am pronouncing that correctly, so I'm really sorry. Rocco and Paul, thank the three of you for coming on board, showing your support, and keeping the podcast coming at you in high quality week after week. All right, very excited about today's episode. We're going to be taking a look at some of Coltrane's playing, always one of my favorite things to do. So let's jump into it. So what I wanted to show you this week was this way that Coltrane uses a combination of a bunch of triads, but he combines that with some chromatic motion that just makes it sound amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at his original line, and then I came up with an exercise to just kind of show you the thinking between looking at something from one of your favorite artists in a transcription that you've done, and then adapting it into your own exercise, which is going to benefit you in a lot more situations than just the situation that you see the artist playing it in, if that makes sense. So we want to turn some of these concepts into tools that we can use over a bunch of different chord progressions and in a bunch of situations instead of just literally using it like in this case over a blues in the specific place that Coltrane did. All right so we're going to take a look at just a tiny little excerpt from Coltrane's solo on Locomotion which is an awesome tune it's just a b-flat blues and uh, his playing is of course as always just genius over this stuff. And it's also a pretty approachable solo as far as Coltrane goes. It's a pretty approachable thing that I think a lot of you out there could get benefit from studying. So go out and find a transcription of John Coltrane playing Locomotion. You'll see this line, or better yet, transcribe it yourself. Okay, so what we see is in measures 7, 8, 9, and 10 of the blues, Coltrane does this really, really cool thing where he plays this series of descending triads, but he uses a chromatic approach tone to the fifth of these triads, and it just gives it this really, really cool effect of these descending tonalities, but with some chromaticism built into it. So if you take out your PDF, follow along with me. Uh, This is going to really make a lot more sense if you're looking at it. So what he does is he plays these four note segments starting in the second half of the first measure. And he takes first an A minor chord and he approaches it with a D sharp. So the notes are D sharp, E, C, A. So the E, C, A is a descending A minor triad. And he's using a D sharp to give that chromatic approach. Then in the next four notes... He does a G major triad, B 
being approached by a C sharp. So C sharp D, B, G. Then in the next one, he goes down a half step, does an F sharp major triad, and he approaches it using a C. So C, C sharp, A sharp, F sharp. Then he continues the line in the same manner with an F major triad, an E minor triad, and a D minor triad. So what you're going to hear when I play this is you're mainly going to hear those descending triads, but you're going to hear each one of the fifth of those triads approached by a half step, which gives it that really, really endearing quality, that thing that makes you want to keep listening to it. And the weird thing about the uh, piece of vocabulary that I'm showing you this month is that it doesn't really matter what the tonality is that he's playing it over, if that makes sense. That doesn't matter as much as the actual pattern that he's using. Because your ear goes from actually hearing the chord progression to more hearing the actual pattern that he's playing. So the fact that it's done over a C7 chord, then a D minor chord, then a G7 chord, I almost feel like that's secondary. Because I have a feeling that Coltrane would feel free to use this over a lot of different chord changes because the ear naturally gravitates towards these descending triads of different qualities with that chromatic approach tone to them. So let me play this for you so that you can hear what it actually sounds like. I'm not gonna play any harmony underneath it. I'm just gonna play the melodic line so you can hear what that sounds like. This is the first part of your PDF for this week. So you can hear the descending tonality, but the thing that makes it really cool, I mean, we can play descending triads and it's not like the hippest thing anybody's ever heard in their lives, but it's that chromatic approach tone that really makes it sound cool because you're getting just this other flavor before you hear the triad. And it just adds, it's funny how one simple melodic device can add so much depth and breadth to a line. And I think that's what's happening here. I think that's what keeps it really interesting. And also he plays it at a pretty fast tempo. So that also helps because it's just impressive to be able to move around among those triads. So you'll notice that it's a mixture of minor and major triads, but I got to thinking, all right, let's make an exercise out of this so that you guys can kind of take this with you and do something with it further. So. I decided to go with major triads. And basically what I'm doing is, I'm just using all 12 keys of major triads, descending from the fifth with a chromatic approach to that fifth. So I'm starting on C and I'm coming down. I'm doing a C triad, a B triad, a B flat triad, so on and so forth, all the way until I get back down to a C triad. And I feel like this works really well in half steps. So doing, you know, descending triads in half steps. It just works really well with the line. So this is gonna be your second exercise on your PDF this week. Let me play it for you. So this is all 12 keys of major triads descending from the fifth with a chromatic approach tone to the fifth. Check it out. <laughs> So a pretty cool exercise that can be used in a lot of different situations. And what I'm going to do for the Patreon members is I'm actually going to throw up a way that you could actually apply that over a 251 along with a little video kind of showing you how you can actually apply this in real life. But even if you just worked on the exercise, it's fantastic for whatever instrument you're playing. It's a great way to gain further knowledge of triads, especially starting on the fifth of each triad. It's just great all around. And then what you should do is, since I'm doing this with major triads, you should also do this with minor triads. Why not, right? You're, you're investigating this concept. Why not investigate it a little bit more deeply? Put it into a different tonality, minor triads. You can, in fact, do it with a bunch of different qualities of chords. What if you did it with uh, diminished triads? What if you did it with augmented triads? There's really a lot of possibilities here, and that's the name of the game is taking one concept and kind of 
forcing it to run its course over a bunch of different situations. That's what's going to make you the best player you can possibly be. So if you're a Patreon member, make sure you go and grab the PDF to this. There will be a video there with another PDF that's detailing a line that you can actually use like over a 2.5 or something like that. Okay, so this is pretty amazing. I love looking for things like this, and uh, they just benefit my playing so much. Just a simple little four measure phrase has now given me weeks of material to work on, and I just know that it's going to end up making me a better player. So let me know what you think about this episode. Uh, you can do that by joining up the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group. Make sure you request to get in that. I will approve you and then we can have a discussion on this episode or any of the other episodes. I love hearing from you guys. It's been some great discussion in there these past couple weeks. Remember, if you want to become a Patreon member, get the bonus content for this episode and get the PDFs to every single episode, just go to... 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, and you will be able to join up today for the low cost of only $3 a month. All right, everybody, hope you have a great weekend. Hopefully this episode benefited you, and we will talk to you soon. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.